Hi, I'm Ted. Welcome to The Play's The Thing, where we put the play back in Shakespeare. Today I'm going to show you my favorite technique for introducing Romeo and Juliet. It's a great way to deal with wordplay in any Shakespeare text, but uh, you do this one on day one and you're going to have students hooked for the rest of the play. Okay, it's so Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, um, you've done the chorus, you've talked maybe a little bit about sonnets, and you're trying to get into the beginning of the play, and you've got Samson and Gregory, and you've talked about puns, and you've introduced the idea, you've talked about the concepts, you've given some examples, and then they get into the play, and they read those puns, and you're laughing at all the appropriate parts and the inappropriate parts, uh, like you're supposed to, and the students look at you like you sniffed way too much glue, and then you realize, yeah, they're right. It's just really not that funny to a modern audience. And so this activity is designed to um, be highly engaging, entertaining. Uh, it teaches the aspects of the wordplay and gets everybody involved and so that it makes that potentially really dull and boring activity into something a little more dramatic. So uh, you need a copy of that script uh, of the opening scene, and I'll put a I'll put a connection I'll put a link in the, to the web page with a PDF so you can access that. Um, both one is completed, and also a blank one you can photograph uh, or photocopy for your students. And uh, and then you need two pool noodles, like this, um, and these are going to be great too. And so I'll explain how you do that. Uh, so first of all, um, you take the text and you hand them out and they ask you to explain puns and you say, I want you to go to a word uh, as you're reading through. When you find a word that puns off a word before it, I want you to circle the word and then draw an arrow back to that pun. Uh, and then they progress. So, you know, Gregory on my world will not carry, you know, will not carry coals. And then, no, and then we should be Collier's. So Collier's plays back. I mean, we being in collar. Again, circle, draw an arrow. Uh, we draw, I, while you live, draw your neck out of collar. So I usually model the first you know, you know, two or three for students, and then I either have them do it individually or you know, with a partner. Okay, go through until the end, until Abram shows up, you know, and there's the biting of the thumb part. Go through and identify as many as you can. And I you know, walk around the room, help them out, and they, and they do that. After that, I, re I usually go through, I used to go right into the noodles, but now I go through and I explain it. So, okay, let's, let's figure out, okay, let's put it up on the board. Um, you know, usually I'll project it, you know, back in the, back in the day, you know, uh, kind of maybe when these puns were famous. Uh, first, when Shakespeare first wrote them, I had this, this, this old thing called uh, an overhead projector. And I'd throw that up there and circle it as we go. Um, now with technology, usually I just fla you know, flash my computer screen up on the, on the Apple TV and do it that way. I'm sure with a tablet you could do it. Um, I don't really use a tablet in the classroom, but maybe sort of a smart board or something like that you could circle and that would be a great way to do it. Um, but go through, okay, what words did you get? Okay, good, and you pun and, you, and explain the puns and what they mean as they go. And that way it becomes really clear. When you start getting down towards the end where Gregory said, you know, me they shall feel while I'm able to stand and you get those sexual jokes, you kind of get to know your audience. You know, when I, uh, if I'm workshopping this with middle school students, I, I just cut that part out. Um, and depending on your, on your school culture, you know, maybe you, you can model some, some uh, a, a appropriate adult ways to handle that. Um, but that's up to you and your style. I usually explain it. And it's health class and I just say, oh, that's his ability to do. And so it's all up to you on, on how you want to do that. Um, I find attention is pretty rapt though when we get to that point it is kind of funny so um, again that's up to you as you finish up that that scene and you've identified all the puns that's when I, I ask for two volunteers and I produce the noodles and usually the production of the noodles uh, ensures some, some couple oh me 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 and you get people that are involved in it and so what I do is I say okay um, when you read, you're gonna read the text to each other and when you come to a word um, that's got a, an arrow drawing back to your partner's word, you get to whack them with a noodle. And so that's the idea about the, the verbal word play. You know, the, you know the, well, I guess word play couldn't be really verbal. It, had, no, it has to be verbal. It can't be anything else, could it? Um, but that emphasizes that aspect of it. And I tell them, you know, you're not mortal enemies. This is not, you're not with a broadsword and trying to kill people. It's, it's two friends sort of poking at each other. So um, the only places you can hit each other is on the shoulder uh, and on the hip. Um, I don't, you know, we don't want any concussion protocols, so no whacking people in the head. And remember, it's supposed to be playful. 
So that's the first part of it. But I also want to get everybody else involved in the class. And so I tell the class, whenever someone hits somebody else with a noodle, you have to react. You know, you can laugh, ah, you get, oh, you got you with a joke, but have some sort of um, auditory response to it because it creates the energy that everybody else can, that can play from. And I usually try to set the scene. You know, let's imagine that you're just finishing up lunch, you know, whether it's you know, school and maybe you finish up lunch and away from the bell to ring or maybe you're at work and, you know, you're on your lunch break and you're waiting, you know, to go back to work. Um, so, you know, you just, you're, you're hanging out, you just finished up, you're waiting for the next thing and this is sort of what happens and that helps create the energy. And so then they go. Gregory, on my word will not carry colts. No, then we should be colliers. Oh! 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 And so now um, you've got a, a visual representation of the jokes, of them performing it. You've got auditory because they're hearing the jokes. They can read it because they're seeing the text. And everybody's hopefully involved and engaged in the process. It's not just one or two people, and it's not just the teacher reading the part. And so it, it satisfies a lot of the great criteria, I'd think, of, of, of good teaching and learning. Oh! 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 Oh!